Hello everyone. Today I'm doing a video response to Michael Bradley giveaway and uh, the uh, uh, question number one I believe is what's your earliest recollection of a concert? Uh, and I'll answer that straight away. I was about eight years old, and my mother took me to a venue called the Robin Hood Dell. It's an outdoor amphitheater uh, in the Philadelphia area, and we saw a light classical slash pop concert uh, of the Philadelphia Orchestra uh, conducted by Eugene Ormandy uh, and uh, I do remember the uh, the you know the theater itself the outdoor theater uh, and the music was uh, very enjoyable. It was sort of like the New York Pops doing the, uh, some of the music of the day in an orchestrated form. And it was a little classical thrown in there, like a real light, uh, upbeat type. And that's the first question. And, uh, again, my mom took me that, and it was just me and my mom. Okay, uh, the second part of the question was, he wanted to know, uh, it's question number two. He wanted to know what concert I would, I enjoyed and would go back. It's sort of like a, uh, connected but separate actually quest and uh that would be uh the benny goodman orchestra and small group uh concert at a place called the valley forge music fair and that was the theater in the round it was inside you know of course it's a a really great place that uh, it closed up a while back uh, a number of years back but there were great shows there uh, that you didn't have to go down uh, to Philadelphia Center City to watch and it was great for the suburbs but of course it's replaced by a Kmart or something like that but uh, I saw many good things there it's so, all uh, Believe it or not, Johnny Carson in stand-up. Uh, and, of course, Benny Goodman and uh, uh, what else? Count Basie I saw there with uh, uh, my my uh, boss at the time, a pulmonary, pulmonary physician who's since passed away, unfortunately. Uh we saw Count Basie there. But the uh, but I'm a Benny Goodman fan from way back. I have, uh, you know, I'm going to do a little bragging. I have 84 Benny Goodman LPs. And, um, you know, about 30 or 40 of CDs, hundreds of tapes that I taped off of various shows on the radio. And uh, if you want to know anything about Benny Goodman, I'm the one to ask. And uh, I even have a book. It cost me like 70, 70 large, uh, 70 bucks for this uh, complete listing of all recordings and believe it or not, all performances live 
um, that he ever did. And of course, that um, uh, took a lot of research. There was a uh, uh, a super fan. He's also an author to put together this wonderful compilation. If you're interested, you get it from the library. It's got Benny Goodman, Listen to His Legacy by Scarecrow Press. It's about that thick. And it has pictures, recording dates, of course. Every, every one, even the little small venues, uh, every one is listed. And air transcriptions. So, uh, uh, that's the book if you want to read up on Benny Goodman. And uh, so that one, that was in 74 at the Valley Forge Music Fair, suburb of Philadelphia. And I, you know, if I could jet back in time, I would go to that one. And I'll throw in another, uh, the second one, uh, I saw, believe it or not, at the end of his career, before the plane crash, Ricky Nelson and his Stone Canyon Band. And, uh, I'm sure everyone, uh, has heard of Ricky Nelson, uh, and uh, is an early rocker, and he had the TV show of his parents, the uh, uh, Ozzy and Harriet show, and the pilot, I think, was Here Comes the Nelsons. And you might not know this, but Ricky Nelson's parents were in the big band era, uh, Ozzy Nelson, the dad, was uh, a band leader, and Harriet Hillard was his vocalist that later became uh, Mrs. Nelson. That's a little aside. Well, anyway, this Stone Canyon band of Ricky's uh, came to a place called the, uh, the Main Point, which was... Uh, a little club right outside Philadelphia, about eh, about eight miles or even less from the city line, and it was uh, another great place. They didn't serve alcohol, and uh, uh, it's no, uh, it was revived, but it's not the same. I don't know if it's so. Well, anyway, that was uh, the one that. The club that, if you were in, in town, you would go, it's called the Second Fret, which I'd never been there. But the main point was <clears throat> known far and wide as great entertainment. People like uh, James Taylor's brother, Livingston Taylor, was there a lot. And uh, Tom Rush, Dave Van Ronk. Uh, it was a little folk, folk club, uh, era club. And, uh, so anyhow, when I saw Ricky Nelson there, and it's a little band, I was engaged to this woman at the time, which I went into in one of my earlier videos. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But, uh, we broke up. Uh, it was in the paper as far as the engagement announcement, but it didn't work out, so we... And her name was Debbie, and later I met my Debbie, uh, which became my wife. I had an affinity for Debbies. But anyhow, that's another question. And then, uh, I think the third, he wanted to uh, uh, have you uh, uh, look at a certain site, uh, a pipe maker. And friend them, and uh, uh, you know, check out the video. So I did that, and so that's my VR response to uh, Mr. Bradley. 
And now I'm going to be smoking uh, HH Dark Fire, which I have like half a pound left in my uh, uh, Mersham, quite large Mersham. It's mounted with uh, regular candle wax so it doesn't slip out of the the holder uh, it's called the fisherman and it has a lot of character uh, those that have followed me a long time um, know the pipe it's even yeah the nose in person it's it shows up a little redder it's actually uh, like you would get a sunburn and here we go I have to let's see if I can get this lit. Mm. 